I want to talk quickly about that video, that YouTube video about the uh, invisible gorilla experiment. Now, if you haven't seen that video yet, I want you to stop and watch it. Just type in YouTube and invisible gorilla. You'll find it. And I want you to watch it first because I'm going to talk about it and not, you know, I don't want it to, to spoil it for you because that the official, you know, the original YouTube clip is going to ask you to actually partake in the experiment. And I, I encourage you to do that because when you do that, you're going to remember this a whole lot more. And uh, that's one thing about really becoming a better thinker, you know, a better um, just, just, just getting a lot out of your education is figuring out ways to remember all the nifty and new ideas that you're learning. All right. So watch that. They come back and finish this. Now, if you've already seen it, carry on. Right. Let's let's keep on going. Um, I, I I bring this video uh, into my class when I want to give more examples about the argumentative technique of data or of experimentation. Now, sometimes I'll use those two terms interchangeably because. Uh, when you experiment, you're trying to get data, right? So, 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 the argumentative technique of of a uh, you know experiment, where you design a, a new experiment and you run it, uh, whether it's collecting results or surveys or whatever. I know an experiment is not the same thing as a survey, but but um, you know I'm, I'm lumping those two things kind of together to say that you're 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 developing new information. And we call that going into into the field, working, working, uh, doing field work, or doing practicum, practical work in order to get to get new information. And if, if the information is relevant and it's it's it 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 um <clears throat> it speaks towards um you know a, a question that 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 uh that is that is still at play, you know, in, in, in the sources you're looking at, I, what I mean by that is I want you to remember the idea of the conversation. And, and if, if, if your information in some way is, is, is still a contribution, whether it be big or small, to the conversation that's happening about that topic that you're working on, right? Um, uh, then, you know, uh, you, you have something that could very well be a contribution, right? Now, once you see this this YouTube, once you've seen this YouTube video, you realize that that the conversation topic there was attention, right? And the 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 experiment there is trying to tease out whether or not uh, you know just how reliable is you know an eyewitness testimony or uh, you know how much do you actually see you know when you're focusing on something you know so so if you're um, you know, if if you are uh, driving fast and you're and you're focusing on 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 your lane, you know, are, are you really going to see uh, m maybe a pedestrian that's on the side or a motorcyclist that that blends into the background? See, you know, are you going to be able to see that? Um, and you think, oh yeah, no problem, I will. But you know, once you get data, like w once you get the results, you know, from something as simple as that YouTube video. On, on the invisible gorilla, you realize, you know, questions start arising in you and you become less sure as to what exactly you're, you know, is going on with your memory, your recall, and your eyesight. So one, 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 you know, one thing you need to strive for as you grow as a person is, is to latch on and to double down with those things that you know are true, but then to pull away from and to to be less dogmatic about things, uh, less you know, to let the data speak to you. And if 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 uh, if something that you thought was absolutely the case now seems to to have contradictory elements coming at it, co con contradictory data, then then you need to resolve that. Or if you can't resolve it, at least be less sure. You know, at least recognize that that you know things are not as simple as or as black and white or as uh, easy to understand as you may have thought them to be, right? And you're allowing complexity to come in, and you you, you are now uh, moving up and down a spectrum of probability and possible knowledge, and, and instead of you know uh, claiming certainty. Although we always, uh, you know, whenever you are, you can truly 
be certain about something, you know, be certain about it. You know what I'm saying? It's a little bit of a digression there, I understand. Let me get back on track. I want to uh, I want to point out that this was a very easy experiment to design. It was a very easy experiment to run as a teacher. Now, you probably could have done this with a bunch of friends. You see what I'm saying? Um, and it wouldn't it would not have cost you a dime. So every now and then you run across experiments that really have been um, valuable experiments in psychology, sociology, economics, you know, uh, education, you know, all, all sorts of areas, memory studies, you know, cognitive studies, just, just simple experiments that you realize pr probably cost very little, if anything at all, uh, d didn't take up much time at all, and yet uh, provided uh, the beginnings of a data pool, you know, because if you look at this experiment, you know, uh, on YouTube, you're not getting a lot of numbers here. Right. I mean, um, it may have worked for you. It may not have. The person is just saying that it may be if you get 10 people watching this video, you know, seven are not going to see or five are not going to see the gorilla. But, you know, where is the actual numbers? Right. And so this this type of video, this these sorts of experiments are often very good just to start the conversation. Right. And then someone might go out and from the argument from this you know, video, which I think is, is I would cat cat categorize as the argumentative technique of experiment. Somebody might go out and say, you know, I'm going to substantiate. You know, I'm going to I am going to try to get the numbers here. Now, I, I don't know if these authors have done this or not, but 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 if they've actually written up a formal study, maybe they had a, a 500 students watch this. Right. And if that's the case, then they are trying to provide more numbers, right? So for you then to try to substantiate it might be not necessary, not a contribution because they have already done that. But see, if they haven't done that, then you could actually write a paper doing nothing more than running the same YouTube clip, but now to a hundred of your friends. And you're just tracking to get the actual percentage out of as the number set grows, you know, as the population grows of people watching the video. That's how you can make a contribution. We would call that the contra uh, the technique of substantiation. Okay. Uh, now, uh, what if what if you realize, hey, <laughs> you know, this video is twenty years old. I don't know how old it is. Maybe it's not twenty. But but a lot of times you'll run across an experiment that the the community, the science community, or other communities of knowledge and or the disciplines have embraced, have have run with, have have accepted, and you realize. That experiment has been used to build so much on top of it, so many other ideas, so much so much other stuff, but it's 30 years old or it's 20 years old or even the, the way technology has changed and the way certain established mores or values in our culture have changed. I think if, if even it's 10 years old in this day and age, in, in, in the, uh, you know, 2020s, um, you know, if this thing was done in 2008, I, I, I think it's time to do it again. You know, that would be the technique of update. Because maybe we're, as, as our education, educational opportunities have grown as a culture, as a society, maybe as um, whatever, you know, maybe we've gotten better at paying attention. Or could it, could it not be that because of, of all the things that, that we are trying to focus on at once, um, and all the information we get coming at us, new information through um, social media or through content providers like YouTube or, um, you know, just uh, you know, music, stream, streaming music, streaming videos, uh, TikTok, uh, Spotify, you know, I, I use these videos for, for, for five or ten years. So if you're a student watching this in ten years, you might be wondering, what in the world is TikTok? But um, Instagram, you know. These things, these things uh, might have eroded our ability to pay attention. So, you know, that's something to consider. That is something to consider. So that that might be an update might show you that we, we even pay less attention, right? Or what about extension? What about the technique of extension? Now, that that is where you say, look, you know, um, I'm going to see if I can extend this to to younger people or older people, right? Because the subject group here were looked like to be high school students or college students, right? So, so you can extend it by extending the the the, the population, right? Um, or, or you could you could uh, you could try to expand it or extend it in terms of the content, the uh, the concept, 
For example, uh, if, if you notice, you know, the, the people in the video are wearing white shirts and black shirts, and here comes a gorilla in a black suit. Well, what if, what if somebody is wearing, um, what if you have red shirts and blue shirts, see? You'd think then that the gorilla would be even more noticeable, right? And, and, and more people would notice the gorilla. But what if you showed this original clip to 50 students and, you know, 25 of them never noticed the gorilla? What if you, you redid it, right? And you changed, the, changed it to yellow shirts and green shirts or whatever. And then you showed it to a different 100 that didn't know why they were watching it. But, and 47 didn't notice it. So 50%, 40, I think that's a negligible difference, statistical difference. I, I, I don't think that means much at all. I think, in fact, you've shown that the colors don't matter, you know. And I think that would be a contribution. That would be an extension of the concept, right, because you're kind of, you're bringing in new colors and you're going to get different, maybe different results, maybe the same results, right. So um, there's there's a lot of ways you can use something like this as a catalyst text. Remember, as a catalyst text, I mean that it sparks ideas, um, and and it might it might lead to a whole little pathway for you to do a little research on your own. Research not not going checking out books and reading journal articles of books to try to put together what other people have done, but new research by running a simple experiment that's slightly different or doing something with this one, right? If they're linked, but it's updating or it's substantiating or it's extending it, right? And I think that'd be a great way to write a research paper.